Amen. Praise the Lord. Everybody, praise the Lord. Everybody, look, it's a good thing to be here today. This is our first uh, Zoom meeting in the new year. I'm excited. I know you guys are excited. I'm going to just bring you guys in because I need to see your beautiful faces as we're getting ready to go forth in the word of God and what we're learning today. What we're going to be talking about today, and I think I'll bring it up right here. We are going to be talking about three-dimensional transformation. Uh, this is the time for transformation, not the year of transformation. This is not the year of transformation, but it is the time for transformation. All right. The Lord has been speaking this to me over and over and over again, and he, everything is tied to it. This is the time for you to be transforming, going from one place to the next. If you've been sitting back on the sidelines, then it's time to get in the fight because to be an ambassador, you need to be engaged. You need to be raising up someone else. Somebody needs to be under your wing. As you learn, they learn. You learn together. You partner together to go on this journey. We are a a um, a community of teams. We, we, we really are. We function as a team. So it's time to do that. And I'm going to be talking to you about it, though. But we're going to be talking about three-dimensional transformation. Three-dimensional transformation. And I'm going to kind of explain what that means. All right. Let me bring up my little notes here. So I want you to understand that when it comes to anything that God wants to do that he is trying to, um, how would I say it? When he's trying to formulate it to be a complete whole, there are two numbers for it. One that he uses is seven. Like when he created the earth, he created the earth in seven days. In seven days, he created it. He rest, he created the world in six days, rested on the seventh, right? So you'll see the number seven. That's the number of completeness. But another, uh, term or uh, number for complete is three. And we see the number three over and over again, right? So number one, we see God's, uh, uh, in God himself, he is three, father, son, and Holy spirit. Number two, we see the number three in the temple. The temple was constructed outer court, inner court, holies of holies. The next thing where we see it is in human beings in us, he made us to be body, soul, and spirit. You were made in the image of God. And I'm going somewhere because we got to understand it. Watch this. Noah had how many sons? Three sons. Three sons to populate the earth. All three sons, uh, all, all people on earth come from those three sons. How do we know that? Because to this day, they classify us into three categories. Caucasoid, Negroid, and, and, and Mongoloid. So those three, those three are are representative uh, or representative of the three sons of Noah. Um, there are, watch this, when we've been going through the book of Revelation, there are three dimensions in Revelation, the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven vows. You see both numbers of completeness, seven and three. Very important. Who did Jesus take up on the mountain to be transformed? He took Peter, James, and John. <laughs> All right, I'm just trying to get, get this in your head. Follow me. God, when he spoke throughout the entirety of the Old Testament, he would tell them, I am the God of Abraham. I'm the God of Isaac. Some of y'all catching it. And, and I am the God of Jacob. How many times did Jesus pray in the garden? Three times. I'm just putting it, in, I'm, I'm getting it in your head. He was placed, Jesus was placed on the cross at the third hour. Darkness covered the sky for, from the sixth to the ninth hour, three hours. And then he rose on the third day. So when God is getting ready to do something in excellence, we will see it in threes. I remember Bishop Smith teaching us that all those years ago. The truths of God are revealed in three dimensions, right? And the third is always the strongest, right? You got the father. He created the world, but the, you didn't see him. But then the son came and you could see him, but only for 33 years. But when the Holy Spirit came, he's been here ever since. He can be in somebody in China. He can be in somebody in Russia. He could be filling somebody in, in, in America. He is everywhere. God with us everywhere, all the time, manifesting his presence, speaking and hearing his voice in your, your innermost being. So this is what God wants us to understand that when we're getting ready to have this transformation, it must be three-dimensional. It must be three-dimensional. If it doesn't, you lose. The blueprint, 
is a three-dimensional transformational uh, uh, blueprint. What is the blueprint? It is in Acts 2 and 38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. There are three elements to the blueprint. You got to repent. You must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and then you will receive the Holy Ghost. So look, for ambassadors, what we're going to be doing all, from now on is we're going to hold up the threes because the blueprint, the, the, the repentance, the baptism, and being filled with the Holy Ghost ministers to the three parts of me, the body, the soul, and the spirit. The spirit is transformed when I repent and get saved. The soul, which is the mind, is transformed when I'm baptized. And then the body is filled with the Holy Spirit and power. Glory to God. So we want to function on all three dimensions. Are y'all with me? I hope y'all can throw up your threes if you got them. Throw up, if you can throw it up. That's how we moving in this generation when they see us. In this season, when you see me, what you doing? I'm moving in body, soul, and spirit. God is improving me. In all three dimensions, body, soul, and spirit. Because when God does things, he does them in that three-dimensional space. Glory to God. Love that. So look, I want to look at some, a scripture real quick. And then we're going to, I'm going to talk to y'all. I want to talk to you. Body, soul, and spirit. This is what we got to do. Body, soul, and spirit. So I want you to, if you can write this down. 1 John 5. Seven and eight. I think I'll have, uh, if we can unmute Sister Trina and have her to read it. Are you there? Yes, I am. Read that for us. First John five, beginning at seven. <clears throat> For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Uh-huh. And watch this, verse 8. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit and the water and the blood. These three agree in one. There you go. So in heaven, it is the Father, the Son, which is the Word, and the Holy Ghost. He is one. Those three are one. But conversely, on earth, there are three that bear witness. Witness. Witness that you are completely transformed. I hope y'all getting that. It is the witness. It is the evidence that you have been transformed. And the three are what? The spirit. Let me go back. The spirit, the Holy Spirit, the water, which is in baptism, and the blood. We repent and believe in the power and the authority of the blood to transform us. We believe in the cross and therefore we uh, we are saved. Then we are baptized in water in the name of who? Jesus Christ. And then we receive the what? The spirit of the living God. They agree in one. What is the one? What is the one? What is the one thing that they that that those three things are agreeing in? It is agreeing that you are being transformed. But the problem with the church today, and I'm going to look at you guys here. The problem with the church today is we'll get it and then won't give it to anybody else. When Remember this. Watch this. When Jesus came the first time, two of these were done. John the Baptist came preaching, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then what did he do? He baptized them, put them in water. They repented and turned to what was coming. What was coming? The cross. Jesus was going to the cross. Then he baptized them. And then they were ready to receive Jesus. When Jesus came, he brought the final peace. That's why on the day before, before Pentecost, the 50 days before Pentecost, Jesus looked at him and said, I don't want you to do anything. Stay in Jerusalem because you're going to be endowed with power from on high. I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I will send another. It is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. He will tell you of all things. And this is the blueprint that we're supposed to uh, give to each and every person that they may come into faith. We today in the body bring people to church, but they don't know of the blueprint. There are three that bear witness in her. 
the spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one, the transforming of this person. You got people that are in church. They've been in church their whole life. They ain't transformed. They got in the water unrepented, and they came out wet, a wet sinner. <laughs> they was wet. I'm saved. I'm good. Really. That's why you, 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 you don't have any fruit. You don't like being here. You just come because you don't want to go to hell, right? <laughs> but we want to see people transformed. Do y'all want to see that? Can Amen. I get a wave if y'all want to see that? Because I can see y'all. Yeah, there we go. I like that, throwing up them threes. We want to see them transformed. How are we going to help them do that? And we're going we're gonna to do it. So this is very important for us to do this. Look, let me tell you this too. What we're getting ready to do is going to go beyond just that. That's the first step. The blueprint is the first. Everybody's supposed to do that to be saved right? To be transformed, right? But after that, what are we seeing? We're seeing believers. I remember a friend of mine, he asked me a question. He said, man, I, I moved back home and I'm seeing all of these great generals in the kingdom of God just drop dead from heart attacks, drop dead from hypertension, drop dead from, uh oh, they look, I don't want nobody to hang up on me on the Zoom. <laughs> They just, and I said, Lord, why, why is this happening? Why are you doing this to your people? He said, I'm not doing it to them. They're defiling their temple. He said, what do you mean? They don't care about their body. That is your body. Uh-oh. Who is quiet? Is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I didn't say you got to look like Lou Ferrigno. Some of y'all don't even know who that is. Ronnie Coleman or, or one of these big dudes today. You ain't got to be all super duper in shape, but you got to be on your way. You can't say, Lord, God fills you with the Holy Spirit and you drop dead at 40 because you never took care of the temple. He can never use you to go and minister the word of God. He tells you to go and minister. You take three steps and you're ready to pass out. The Lord says, I want to reverse that curse. Glory to God, man. I'm going to come. We coming after it in the name of Jesus Christ. You get your body filled with the Holy Ghost and you fall on the floor. You can't get up. <laughs> Amen. We got to pull you up. But this is what we're going to do as brothers and sisters in Christ. We're going to help you pull up and go on a treadmill for three seconds and sit down and go on a treadmill for three seconds and sit back down again. So eventually you can get up to a minute. Oh, man, this is look, y'all don't want if you want to be transformed. This is what it entails. Right? Are y'all hearing me? Body, soul, and spirit. We're going to teach you how that your soul, and we're, and we're going to do this over the next couple of weeks, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. So we're going to teach you some things where it comes to that. Right? Because have you ever met a believer that knows the word, but they are almost plumb crazy? You're like, how do they know the word, but they cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? Because they don't know how to deal with regular life. You don't need to answer the phone. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to. <laughs> Nobody laughing with me. It's all good. Hey, how's it going? Oh, thank you, Jesus. I almost feel. You felt that? And then it fell out in Walmart. you like, get up. <laughs> hey, man, they're going to put us out of Walmart because you don't know how to deal with the presence of the Holy Spirit. We're going to teach you how to train your mind. Glory to God where you can understand the difference between hearing the voice of the Lord and now getting to the point where you almost schizophrenic. Amen. They don't want to hear it. I, I knew I was going to get a little pushback. I'm looking at y'all. Some of y'all are like, oh, I don't know. But this is the truth. Because when people come up to me, they say, oh, I know you hear from the Lord. I know you, you got to be going crazy with all this stuff. And it, No, I'm not. Why, why aren't you? Oh, because I don't prior to, pri prioritize words that I get from pro as prophecy over the book. The word of God is the final authority, not a word that I get if wh whatever word I receive to confirm whether or not it's my mind, the devil or God, I take it to the word of God, which will never fail. Jesus said heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never fail. This is the logos, the word of God. We, we only rest our faith and our hope in the word of God. So therefore I'm not cuckoo. Amen. <laughs> when, I don't, when I see something happening, I don't trip out. We go by the word of God. Well, what do you do when something happens? Well, what does the word say? This is what we want to train to. 
body, soul, and spirit. Do you know how to, pers to, to pursue the Lord to be filled with the Holy Ghost? We're going to do that. And the question is, how bad do you want it? Do you want to be changed? I was talking uh, to the Lord just over the last couple of weeks, and what he said is this. He said, the biggest issue you're going to have with people and wanting to be transformed is that they don't want to change what they've been doing. If you, whatever you've been doing, it will not be enough for the next level. Let me give you the scripture. Look, let me go, let me go here with it. If my computer will act right. There we go. Let me go here with it. I want you all to look at this scripture. Well, let me give you this one first. 1 Corinthians 5.23, it says, And the very God of peace will sanctify you, what? Wholly, completely. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord. This is what we're doing. You remember, believers, remember, ambassadors, our mission is to, uh, is to essentially warn, prepare, Get people ready for the coming of the Lord, raising up ambassadors. This is what we're doing, right? But watch this. In order to do it, you got to go from glory to glory. Look at this. Verse 18. Read verse 18 for me, says the trainer. Can you see that? Are you there? She done muted herself again. <laughs> there you go. There I am. Yes, I can see it. Okay, read that for me. Verse 18 or 17? 18. 18. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So what it's saying is, and I want you to see this scripture, what he's saying is, is that when we see the glory of God, it's almost like we're seeing it in a mirror. And God is trying to transform us into the image of the glory of God. In other words, what I was created to be is going to bring him the maximum amount of glory. But to do that, I must be changed into that image when I'm seeing God in front of me. I don't, not with physical eyes, but as I see him trying to attempt to make me go to the next level, to go to the next dimension, to move to the next phase, he's trying to push me. When he does that, I have to be willing to go from glory to glory to glory. This is why there is no end in God and why when we get to heaven, we will not be bored because even in heaven, I'm going to be progressing and going to the next level. But to do it, he's going to get me out of my comfort zone. Well, I don't like to come to prayer. You need to get your behind up and come. Whatever you, you don't like doing it, that's what you need to be doing. Oh, you don't like doing this? You need to get up and do it. Amen. That's what he wants you to do. Why? Because when you step out, anybody can do what they like to do. There's, a lot, there's some stuff coming up right now that I'm going to have to do at, when, in our local meetings. Then I'm like... I got to do it. And one of the reasons why is because a lot of people don't want to step up and do it. I can't, I, did, I can see, I, hey, can you do that? Uh, I don't want to do that. Well, don't, don't do it. Just sit down. But when you do that, watch, watch you stay at glory and not go to glory. I learned that a long time ago as a young minister. I remember it was a, a situation and I, I, I refused to do it. And the people who did it, all of them became pastors before me and they weren't even ministers yet. <laughs> the Lord walked them past me, <laughs> just walked them right past me. I was like, I've been preaching since I was six and your elevation is only stopped by your motivation. You ain't motivated. So when you do that, don't sit there and come on zoom 20 years from now saying, man, Oh, I, I haven't learned. Let's get it. Are y'all ready to get it? Three. Amen. Boom. We going body, soul, and spirit. We going hard for it. We going after it. Amen. Write this down. No excuses. <laughs> you tired? So what? <laughs> 
You lost the job. Now what? <laughs> Spouse acting crazy. They been crazy. They was crazy the day you met them. <laughs> and your mama told you not to do it, but you did it anyway. So this okay. They been crazy for years. God, just stay with them and pray them through it. Glory to God. Amen. Not my spouse, probably somebody else's, amen. The, na the neighbors, amen, <laughs> glory to God. So this is what I want you to see. No more excuses, no more excuses. Let's go to the next level. Are y'all ready to do that? Amen. All right, I might give y'all one more scripture and then I'm gonna cut this and we're gonna continue to talk because I don't want this to be filmed, what we talk about next, all right? Because we're gonna talk about practically how to do it. And the Lord dealt with me saying, there's a lot of enemies who will try to steal and pervert what God is trying to do in this next season. So even though you're hearing me talk about, uh, 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 I'm talking about it like it's a, it's a teaching. No, you're going to see it in a second. We're, we're practically uh, not even about to do it. It's, it's like, uh, it's literally about to happen. <laughs> Amen. With or without you, but we, it's going to be with you, right? Amen. Yeah. I like that. All right. Let me give you one more and I'm out of your hair. So we're going to move from glory to glory. We're going to do it by the spirit of the Lord. We're not going to do it by our, by our might. We're not going to do it by our power. We're going to do it by the spirit of God. Why? Because the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, there's freedom. Amen. You're going to feel, you, you're not going to. You're not going to feel any more free than you do now, because what you do is you let go all of your inhibitions. You let go all of the, the, the past hurts that caused you not to want to step out. And when you let it go and say, God, whatever you want to do, people say that all the time, whatever you want to use me, use me. And then when you, somebody asks you to do something <laughs> that you don't want to do, then you find out that you was lying in church to the Lord. Amen. It's the truth. Lord, whatever you want to do in this season, it's really, Lord, whatever you want to do in this season that feels okay with me and don't take me away from. And the Lord says, how about I just go to this other person who has less skills, who doesn't have any knowledge and don't have the baggage and that'll do anything I say to him. I'll give you an example. How many of you all will eat out of a trash can? Hmm. Found a burger. The burger has not been bitten. Somebody threw it in the trash can. Would you go up and open it and eat it? No. But I know a bunch of people that will. Because they don't have no food. What is the difference between us who would not eat out of that trash can and the person that would eat out of it? Desperation. Mm -hmm. Leonard Ravenhill used to say this all the time. He said, God can't be all you want until he's all you have. I was like, what does that mean? But think about that. Oh, God, you all I want. Really? You don't want that house, <laughs> right? Where you get comfortable. I remember I was put to shame in India in Pastor Joshua's house. I don't even know how to say his name fully, his last name. But I was standing there and it was his house. It was kind of like a house, but upstairs it was made. His whole house was like bricks with mud all over it. It was like packed in mud. You walk up these little stairs, out exterior stairs. I'm sitting there watching his kids playing next to open sewage, right? We used to AC and all of this stuff. And I said, man, he had a little small spot. I said, man, well, how many people come? He said, oh, about 300. They sit on the floor, on the dirt floor. I said, what? When I went to Africa, I was put to shame when I saw them on Sunday. We did three services and they said, oh no, we have five more. <laughs> they did eight services that day. <laughs> Full blown. Y'all don't know if you've ever been to Africa, but they don't have regular praise and worship. It's like, <laughs> we was like, Woo. Uh, right? We like, man, we from, we from the States. We not used to doing all of this. They did, they, they, I mean, seven, eight songs. And you know what? They had an old lady, Mother Nagogo. 98 years old, she's passed on and went to glory now. She would dance every time. She was at all eight service dancing. I said, go ahead, Mother Nagogo. And when the kids get up, she would say, yeah, yeah, yo, yeah. whoa. She would get them pumped up and she would go up there and dance with them all the way until their final service at like 10, 11 o'clock. 
And then the pastor had a motorcycle. She jumped on the back of the motorcycle and he drove her home. 98 years old. And I'm sitting there like, man, it's been three services. Can we go home? And the Lord said, look at you, man. I didn't say you had to do eight services, but am I not worthy of eight services? Am I not worthy of nine? Am I not worthy of you to get out of your AC church building and be a man of God? Would you pray for hours sweating? I did in the Garden of Gethsemane. Drops like blood. I said, how do you get to that? From glory to glory to glory. It's by steps. It's small. And that's what we want you to know. You don't have to be perfect to be transformed. You just got to say, okay, regardless of how I feel, right? It's the same thing. When I started going to the gym, uh, I went to my, it was my retirement I'm going to give you this little story and then I'll open it up. We'll cut it off and do uh, questions. But it was my retirement and uh, <laughs> I was walking to, we went to the beach. I was walking to the beach. Uh, my cousin, she took, she snapped the photo. And when I got the photo, I got mad at prophetess because I said, who is this pregnant walrus that's next to you? <laughs> and it was me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just, and I'm not against weight. I know it, but it didn't look good on me because I got a skinny frame and I was sitting there like, <sighs> right? And I said, oh no, the devil is alive. My daddy rolling over in his grave right now. All of them was skinny. And here I am breaking the tradition. So I went and went to the gym and almost passed out. So you know what I did? I got back up the next day and said, even if I never look good again, I don't care. They're going to carry me out going to this gym. Because as for me and my house, mm -hmm. I'm going to be ready to serve the Lord. If he sends me somewhere that I got to walk for 10 miles to get the message out, I'm going to be able to walk those 10 miles, right? Amen. I'm going to be able to do something. Whatever he uses me, I'm going to be ready to do it. I don't got to be the buff guy. I don't have to be super six pack, but I'm going to be on my way. I lost two pounds. I lost one pound. I lost a half a pound. That means I'm better than I was yesterday. So I got up and did that. And the Lord says, I need you to do that in prayer. When you don't feel like praying, getting up and pray. When you don't feel like studying my word, getting up and study. When, some, when, when, when one of us asks you to do something that's outside of your comfort zone because you're an introvert and don't like to do it, say, if I fail, I'll fail forward. God, I know you're going to stretch me. And that's when the Spirit of God is released by God to give you abilities you didn't have, to give you gifts and expand on things that he placed in you as a baby. But some of us have crucified what he tried to give us and killed it before it ever got going because of our, our own inhibitions our own fears, our own past experiences. Skip the past. Lord, I'm with you, and are you forgiving me of my past? I've forgiven everybody else of their, pa of, my pa of their past and what they've done to me. I'm ready to go forward. And who knows? Maybe if John Guy, Minister John Guy, Elder, actually, John Guy, had just cleaned that toilet with those other ministers. It was a toilet. It was a toilet, a clogged toilet. And for two seconds, I was, y'all can take care of this, Ray. And the, didn't know that the Lord was, he was observing. He said, oh, that needs to be removed before he can go forward. <sighs> Isn't that powerful? That's how God does. He says, okay, here you go. And then you say, oh, no, I can't. And the Lord says, really? I forgave you of your sins. When I technically didn't want to do it, <laughs> right? I gave you a family. I get, okay, you still got some more growing. But I believe in this season, we're going to go from glory to glory. Amen. amen. Into another dimension. Y'all believe that too? Amen. Amen. Look, we're going to open it up for questions. Just general questions. Like it, we're not going to record that part. All right. God bless you. All of you all, see you next time. The next lesson, we're going to go in depth. We're going to talk about how to do this transformation. Amen.